Peter Quillen versus Andy Lee. Fantastic fight. I'm a fan of both guys. Um, Peter Quillen, unbeaten, uh, you know, been in some fights against a solid level of op opposition. Uh, fought and beat uh, undefeated Hassan and Dam and Jikam, who's a guy I rate very highly. Um, I would say Quillen is a, a really solid boxer puncher, very big for middleweight, big power for middleweight. Uh, you know, really quite solid technically. Uh, someone who can move, someone who can jab, someone who can punch to the body, someone with some semblance of an inside game. I really, really like Peter Quillen. I really like Peter Quillen. Andy Lee, I've been a fan of for a long time, way before he was uh, a world champion. Um, I've always liked sort of boxers who are kind of lanky, you know, a bit tall for their division. I kind of like the way they tend to fight, the jab, the stance, the movement. I'm attracted to Andy Lee's style. I like the fact that he's got power as well. Um, these are both guys that I'm keen on. But one of the two I'm far less convinced about, and that's Andy Lee. Let me tell you why. First and foremost, don't believe what Adam Booth was quoted as saying in an IFL TV interview a few months ago that Andy Lee made the drop down to the middleweight, uh, light middleweight division to have options in both divisions. That's not true. That's not what fighters do. You don't see fighters dropping a weight division typically, uh, you know, just to test the waters of what the market is like at the lower weight division. In my opinion, a tactical decision was made to drop down to light middleweight because it would suit Andy Lee's game better, because Andy Lee could comfortably make £154. I believe both of those statements to be true, and I believe they only came up to 160 because out of nowhere they got a title shot against Matt Korobov. They were successful in that title shot, congratulations. But it doesn't change the fact that, in my mind, Andy Lee was previously considering his best option as 154. And I think that's potentially a telling statistic against a guy like Peter Quillen, who's a very, very big middleweight. Secondly, Andy Lee, you know, a lot of people have got on the Andy Lee bandwagon in the last year. They've seen him in two fights, John Jackson and Matt Korobov, both of which have ended in lovely knockouts. You know, as the wire says, knockouts cause amnesia. But let's look at Andy Lee's career. I mean, clearly the guy is a big puncher. Clearly he can whack a bit. Clearly he's got power. But for me, this is no Gennady Golovkin puncher. He's fought two guys in John Jackson and Matt Korobov, who are both very, very underrated. Sorry, overrated in my opinion. I mean, where do you rate John Jackson in the light middleweight division? Where do you rate Matt Korobov as middleweight, uh, in the middleweight scene? Could you honestly say that either of them are top 20 middleweights? or light middleweights in their respective division. Who have they fought? Who's the best guy that John Jackson has beat up at light middleweight? Who's the best guy Matt Korobov has beaten at middleweight? Yeah, I'm saying these are solid enough opponents, but the fact he's KOing Matt Korobov doesn't make me think he's a huge puncher. You know, when Golovkin took out Martin Murray, that tells me he's got genuine power. Um, you know, uh, what I'm getting at is... Let's not forget, Andy Lee, you know, he, he went very deep into a fight with uh, Fitzgerald recently. Same guy we saw Spike O'Sullivan knock out in the first 15 seconds of that fight. Yeah, uh, uh, Andy Lee is not a Gennady Golovkin-style puncher, in my opinion. Yes, he's got power. Yes, you can't afford to take his shots in the chin. But his recent turn of fortunes is, in my opinion, against a much lower calibre of fighter. Um, and Peter Quillen. So Andy Lee, I've got questions about whether this is the weight, right weight class for him. I've got questions about how genuine his power is. I've got a few more questions about him as well. Who's the best guy Andy Lee's actually beaten throughout his career? You know, what opponent has Andy Lee gone in and beaten which suggests he can beat a guy like Peter Quillen? Brian Vera. Andy Lee's defence, not the best. 
all about his chin. We've seen him stopped before. We've seen him stopped in the sort of mid rounds by Brian Vera in their first fight. Admittedly, he came back to win, but we saw him stopped by Brian Vera. We also saw him stopped by uh, Julio Cesar Cervez Jr. My point is that this is a guy with defensive frailties. This is a guy who can be hurt in fights. This is a guy who can be stopped going in against a bigger puncher like Peter Quillen, in my opinion. Finally, you've got to factor in that he can also be outboxed. Let's not forget, John Jackson, Matt Korobov, not A-list opponents. Both of them were pretty much winning every round in their fights with Andy Lee, up till the point of the stoppage. As Dwyer says, knockout has caused amnesia. Let's not forget, John Jackson, the C-list light middleweight, was comprehensively outboxing Andy Lee at the point of the stoppage. And I like Andy Lee. I am an Andy Lee fan. But I'm just being real ahead of this Peter Quillen fight. So in summary, in Andy Lee, I'm not convinced his power is as great as the public seems to think it is. I'm not convinced he should be campaigning at 160. I'm, I am convinced he can be outboxed, even by a B-level fighter. I'm not convinced about his defence. I'm not convinced that he's got elite level durability. There's lots of questions about Andy Lee, and yet there's no win on his resume that suggests he has proven form of beating a Peter Quillen style opponent. In fact, perhaps the opposite is true. The resume suggests that every time he steps up to the Brian Vera or Julio Cesar Cervez level, he loses. So, even though I've been a fan of Andy Lee, I think he's become one of the most overrated fighters in world boxing. There are a lot of guys out there I take to beat Andy Lee right now. Pure boxers can beat him. Punchers can beat him. I, I think there are a lot of ways of beating Andy Lee. And I think the fact that he has iced two B, C level opponents should not let us forget what's happened previously. Peter Quillen, on the other hand, is someone I am convinced about. I notice a lot of people on forums, a lot of people in the comments section, talk about Quillen's dodgy chin. They talk about Quillen getting hurt in fights. I mean, let's be real here. We're talking about Andy Lee, a guy who's been stopped twice in fights. Peter Quillen's undefeated. Yes, he's been hit. Yes, he's been hurt. But this is boxing. You know, this is the fight game. This is a game where people get punched in the face. Of course people get hurt. Now, I have this argument a lot about Tyson Fury. I try not to digress. But people say Fury's got an awful chin. I think it's the absolute opposite. You know, Fury's been hit. He's been badly, badly hurt in fights. Yet he's got on. He's fought on. He's always won. And I think the same can be said for Peter Quillen. We know that Quillen can be hurt in fights. But what we also know is that he's got a track record of finding a way to win. He's got a track record of not getting stopped. Unlike Andy Lee, who has got a previous history of being stopped. And I don't think Brian Vera is the same level of puncher as Peter Quillen. The same Quillen who knocked the undefeated Hassan and Dan and Jickham down six times. Now, I think Peter Quillen can beat Andy Lee in a number of different ways. I think Quillen has the boxing skill to comprehensively outbox Andy Lee. I mean, John Jackson and Matt Korobov pretty much took every round off Lee. So what is there out there to make you think that Lee can outpoint Quillen? Secondly, I think Quillen's got the power dynamic to the game. I would even suggest, and I know this is controversial, that there is a strong argument that Peter Quillen actually is the power puncher in this fight. When I watched that Hassan and Dam and Jikon fight, I noticed Peter Quillen landing with power with both hands. I noticed Peter Quillen having punch variety. I noticed him being able to hurt Hassan and Dam from different angles with different types of shot. I don't see that with Andy Lee. I see him being able to hurt you in one way, with one hand. 
as I say, even though his recent knockouts have been impressive, I look back and I see previous opponents like Fitzgerald, who have been stopped early, who took Andy Lee late in fights, you know. So, for me, this isn't a competitive fight. This really isn't a competitive fight. Of course, Andy Lee... Yeah, I'm not making the argument that Andy Lee is a light puncher. He carries real power. I don't buy into the fact that he's an elite-level puncher. I would say at middleweight, Lemieux, Quillen, Golovkin, arguably all bigger punchers than him. Um, but clearly, Lee has punching power. And when you have punching power, you always have a way of winning the fight. But for people who think Lee's just going to land on Quillen and that's going to be game over, I think you've got another thing coming. Yeah, Quillen has fought, in my opinion, a better level of opposition than Andy Lee in the past. Quillen's been hurt in fights. Quillen's found a way to win. He's found a way to recover. And, I, as I said, I, I really don't see this as a competitive fight. You know, Andy Lee is a nice guy. He's an entertaining fighter. He's someone I'm a fan of. Boxing is a sport all about levels. And for me, Peter Quillen genuinely is the number two middleweight in the division. He's someone I really, really would rate. He's someone I think could give a lot of people trouble on a sort of pound-for-pound -pound basis. I may look very foolish here, but I just... For me, I'd give Andy Lee like a 5-10% chance in this fight. And the way I give him that chance is on the basis that, you know, if, if I'm wrong, if Quillen's got no chin, and if Andy Lee does suddenly develop... Uh, well, obviously not suddenly developed, but if Andy Lee, if I'm hugely underestimating Lee's power and hugely overestimating Quillen's chin, yeah, I recognise there's a chance I'm doing that. So I, I don't totally rule Andy Lee out, but for me it's a very confident pick that Peter Quillen wins this fight. I think if it's going to be a knockout, it's more likely that Quillen knocks Lee out. I don't see any way, any way, how Andy Lee takes the fight on points. Let me know your thoughts. Many thanks for watching.